Hi, um, my name's Mel, I'm from Ultima Oski and um, I'm going to guide you through the clinical skill of subcutaneous injection in this video. Um, so if you've got the checklist uh, from the WhatsApp group or Facebook, get using it and we'll start, okay? So um, it's a 15 minute station and we're going to begin now. So I'm going to gel my hands, palms to palm, backs of hands, fingers interlaced, Fingers interlocked, tips of fingers, thumbs, and also the rotational rubbing of the wrists. I've got my MAR chart, which they'll give me at the start of the scenario, and I'm just going to do safety checks on my patient. So, it's safe to approach. Hi, my name's Mel, and I'm a community nurse. Can I ask what you'd like to be called? I am Ethel. Hi, Ethel. Ethel, um, just as a safety precaution, can you just give me your full name, please? Ethel Jones. Great. And um, what's your full address, please? Number one, any street, any town, L12 3AB. And can you also confirm your date of birth for me? 010270. Brilliant. That's absolutely correct. And um, are you allergic to anything, Ethel? Any medications, food, dressings, anything we might be using today? No, no allergies. Okay. So the reason why I'm here is to give you some insulin. Um, your long-acting insulin is prescribed in due. Does that sound right to you? Yes, I have it every day. Do you? Okay. And um, have you had anything to eat this morning? Yep, I've had breakfast. Okay, brilliant. And um, have your BMs been okay? Yep, they're good. Brilliant. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and um, we'll give this insulin. Um, just before I start, can I ask, um, where did you last have the injection? That was in my leg. Okay, is it okay if I use your tummy then? Yes. Because we'll rotate the sites examiner to make sure she gets full absorption. Um, so I'm going to pretend, examiner, that the curtains are closed and we're maintaining privacy and dignity for our patient. Um, is it okay if I just um, have a look at your tummy? Yep. So I can see from Ethel's tummy that there's no breaks in the skin. It's nice and intact. No tattoos or discoloration. I'm happy to use this site to give her insulin. I'm just going to cover you back up, Ethel. Now, is it okay if I go and prepare the medication? I'll be straight back. That's great. Okay. So, because I've um, touched the patient, I'm now going to gel my hands. It's a point of hand hygiene. Palm to palm, backs of hands. Fingers interlaced, fingers interlocked, tips of fingers, thumbs, and wrists. Okay. I'm going to pretend that these trays are on here. Okay, so when I get to my table, um, these are the items on it. I'm going to presume that my trolley has been washed and cleaned with soap and water in the last 24 hours, and um, it looks visibly clean. Um, I've been given, for this scenario, I've put two plastic trays out. I might get a cardboard tray, or I might get two cardboard trays. Um, if I obviously had cardboard trays, I wouldn't clean them. But as I've got plastic, I'm going to make sure they're clean prior to starting the procedure. So first of all, I will don an apron. This apron protects um, my uniform from any bodily fluid um, that might come into contact um, with it during the procedure. And it also protects um, my patient from any microbes that I might have um, contaminated myself with. Okay, so I'm going to get a 70% Clonel wipe. So I've got two trays, I'm going to use two wipes. And I'm going to make sure that these visibly clean trays that have been cleaned with soap and water in the last 24 hours are also nice and clean and disinfected. So I've cleaned the bottom, I'm going around the sides. Now I'm going to clean the outside of the trays. Let that one air dry. Get the new wipe. Clean the bottom of the tray. Zigzag. And I'm going to clean the sides and clean the outside. And I'm going to let that tray air dry. I'm going to put this in the bin. 
the items I'm going to use need for this procedure is going to be an insulin syringe. This is a one mil insulin syringes. They come in a variety of sizes. If you've got any queries about insulin syringes or measuring insulin, um, look at my other video. I'm going to be putting it up soon, so keep tabs and follow. So this insulin syringe is intact and it's in date. Okay? I'm going to put that in the tray. I'm also going to offer ethyloplasta after the procedure. These plasters don't have expiry dates on, but it's intact. And some gauze for after. Again. I'm also going to have an alcohol swab. I don't need to clean Ethel's skin because um, she doesn't meet the criteria. She's not immunocompromised. Um, but I do need to um, clean the top of my injection um, bottle because that is a key part. So this injection swab is intact and it is in date, expires 2023. I am now going to make sure that my medication is safe to give. So here we have it. I've already checked Ethel and I've done my first right of medication in that I've identified that this is the correct patient, the right name and address, right date of birth. If she was in hospital, I would make sure her ID wristband correlated with the number on my uh, MAR chart, but she's not, this is a home scenario, um, that her address correlates with the one on my MAR chart. Um, so I've got the right person. The next thing I have to do is make sure I've got the right drug. So I have Glargine prescribed here. I've got Glargine on my um, vial. It's, um, it's intact, it's in date, it expires in the future. There's no precipitate in it, it's a nice clear vial. Um, the dose is recommended 15 international units. It's been prescribed by the doctor. Um, there's 100 units in a mill. Um, of insulin, so I'm going to make sure I draw up um, 15 units. Um, so I need the required amount, which I'll measure in the syringe now. The route is subcutaneous. The frequency is every day, which I've just confirmed with Ethel. I'm going to give it today. It's the right drug, it's the right dose, it's the right route. I'm going to give it subcutaneously. I've got the doctor signed it, it's due now. Everything's been met on rights of medication. I've also checked her allergy status. She's not allergic to this medication. And um, I'm also happy that she's given her consent for her to have it. So I'm now going to clean the bottle. So this is a key part. Okay, a good clean, 30 seconds to make sure I get all the microbes off it. So 30 seconds has elapsed. I'm now going to give it 30 seconds to air dry. So I'll put it here, rest it here for that. And I'll put that in my rubbish. Okay, I'm going to gel my hands because I'm going to put some gloves on. And before you don gloves, you always need to cleanse your hands properly and decontaminate them. Dry for 30 seconds, put on a pair of gloves. Okay, I'm now going to prepare my injection. So I've left my vial in the tray for, 30, for more than 30 seconds now and I'm happy that the microbes that are on the lid, on my key part, have now died and dried on, okay? So I'm safe to now um, break into the vial. I'm going to open my syringe. And I'm going to discard my cap. I'm just going to put it into the tray so I can do a scoop technique to resheathe afterwards. Put my vial. Be very careful not to contaminate either key part. Aspirate. Okay. I've aspirated more than I need. Um, I'm just going to replace the cap using the scoop method.
there we go. The scoop method is actually quite hard to do <laughs> if you've got a safety safety um, end on your um, insulin syringe. But the, it's now on, and I'm now just going to make sure I've got all the bubbles out of my syringe, okay? Because even a tiny amount of bubble um, would mean a lot of dead space and giving the incorrect dose of insulin, which is not what I want to do. I want to be very precise because it's a very strong medication I'm giving. I'm now going to prime my needle, which I won't change because it's an insulin syringe and I'm giving insulin. My drawing up needle is the same as my giving needle. And I'm going to make sure that I have exactly 15 international units of insulin as per my MAR chart. So I'll put that in my tray. I'm also going to take some gauze for after I've given the injection and I'm going to offer ethyl a plaster as well because she might like that. I'm now going to retain my vial, this is the patient's own vial and we keep it with accordance with the manufacturer's instructions anyway. I'm going to leave that here but I'm going to get rid of the rubbish that I don't need. So, put that into my trolley for cleaning afterwards. I'm going to remove my gloves and the rubbish and gel my hands. I'm going to mark my drug charts, my sharp spin, hand gel, and some fresh gloves and I'm going to return to the patient.